Coach John here. This video is going to cover how to put a program together based on the five essential movements. The five essential exercise movements. So this is to go along with the blog I wrote on this. So if you haven't read the blog, read the blog so you know what's going on here. So let's start with Monday. Our first exercise is going to be the suitcase carry. If you don't have a paint can or a 20 gallon pail, fill up a suitcase with some clothes. You get the idea. Fill up a duffel bag with clothes. Fill up a bucket with sand. Find something. If you don't have somewhere to walk, which I be extremely shocked if you didn't have at least 10 feet to walk. Walk on the spot. But please tell me if you have nowhere to walk inside your house, even for five or six feet. Five or six feet is better than, better than nothing. Okay, so after your suitcase carry, you're going to perform your second exercise, which is the push-up. Depending on your level, maybe from the floor, maybe from a bench. Make sure with the push-up, at the bottom, shoulder blades together, pause for a second. At the top, shoulder blades apart, pause for a second. Exercise number three is going to be a horizontal pull. So we're going to do a bent over row. If you happen to have an exercise band, you can do this standing up. So if you have a band, you're probably familiar with this exercise, but you would hook it around something. Simply get a little resistance on there. Allow your shoulder blades to come forward, pull back, shoulder blades together, shoulder blades apart. If you don't have a band, grab your suitcase, paint can, 20 gallon pail, and you can do a bent over row which looks like this. Make sure your spine does not move. There should be no rotation. We're not doing what so many people at the gym do, which is the old lawnmower start technique. If you are using a 20 gallon pail, you will be limited by, your, your range of motion will be limited because it's so tall. So if that's the case, simply stand on something to get that range of motion back. I have a box here, but it could be something like a block as well. So if we're doing that, you bend over like this. Now the pail can go down further. And that's exercise number three. Number four, Final exercise, have our body weight squat. When you're performing the squat, you want to make sure that your spine remains neutral. That means there should be no movement in your spine. Uh, when you're doing a body weight squat, it's not such a big deal, but if you have a heavy load on your back and your, bind, your, <laughs> your spine is flexing or moving under load, that's a good way to herniate a disc. So I would recommend doing that. Body weight, not such a big deal, but you basically go down, keep your knees out, bum back. As you stand up, squeeze your bum. From the front, looks like this. Knees over your toes. Don't allow your knees to cave in. That's exercise number four. So that takes care of Monday. Wednesday is exactly the same, except I switched up the lower body exercise. So the lower body exercise for Wednesday after you do your bent over row or horizontal row, you're going to do a reverse lunge. You may want to hold on to something for balance if you haven't done a reverse lunge before. From the side, simply step back, lower your hips straight down, and come back up. You could alternate, so you could do the other side, or you could come up and do the same side. 
I will leave that up to you. When you're doing your reverse lunge, make sure that your knees remain in alignment so you're not this. And the back foot, turn your toes forward so that you're not going down like that. Make sure your knee is going straight down to the floor and your hips are dropping straight down to the floor. And for Friday or the third day, I changed the lower body exercise again. So this time we're going to do a single leg hinge or a single leg Romanian deadlift as it's commonly referred to. To perform this exercise, you are basically going to stand on one foot. You're going to hinge at the hip. Think of this as your fulcrum. You're hinging forward, hinging forward, hinging forward. Your torso and your leg should be locked together. So they move together. As my torso goes down, my leg goes up. You can do this without balance. At, or, I would, or you could hold on to something. Holding on to something is going to make it much easier. Squeeze your bum on the supporting leg as you stand up to make sure you're activating those, the glute muscles. If you want to add some resistance, you could hold on to a paint can. Hold your resistance on the same side as your supporting leg. For example, Just like so. With any of these exercises, if you do not have the ability to go through a full range of motion without pain or some sort of discomfort, then don't do it. Just gradually work and work towards increasing your range of motion, but don't force it. So work within whatever range of motion you have now. And then maybe the next workout, try and increase it a little bit. Try and increase it a little bit. If you feel any sharp pains, decrease your range of motion. Stop doing what you're doing. Don't work through bad pain. Muscle soreness, you may get muscle soreness the next day or 48 hours later. That's normal. You touch your muscle and they feel quite sore. That's called delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS, D-O-M-S. That's normal. When you are training, do your, uh, when you're actually doing your exercises, you might feel like your muscles are tired and fatigued or feeling tight, that's, that's normal. So don't, don't worry about that. That covers the three-day workout using the essential movements. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please like and share this if you found it useful and please subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you for watching.